Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in Stable Corp and what your pathway looked like in order to get there? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for putting this slide together. I certainly wouldn't be able to do it on my own. So uh, thank you and the team. And um, and I guess regarding, uh, let's say, blockchain uh, time zone, a month is almost a year, right? So after that interview, a lot happened. And so I'll gladly go over through at least some of the uh, topics uh, through this life. So certainly my, my path here is potentially not the usual path. So I'm a computer engineer, so I started my career on a more technical path, but uh, always worked on banks, uh, banks and credit unions. So some big names like uh, CD Bank, HSBC, Rabo Bank from Netherlands. But uh, I didn't have an exact plan of going uh, into the, the crypto blockchain world um, in my career. I actually always loved the technology and got curious as I got curious to other technologies that were emerging. And I think just like in life, some random things happen and, and, and make you make decisions. So I worked uh, with Deloitte Canada for two years back in 2015 to 17 and met a couple of guys that um, in some sense uh, founded and supported Stable Corp and some of it um, kind of partner companies. And, and they invited me to join the project early last year, around May or something when Stable Corp got incorporated. And, and we kind of, you know, reached an agreement and I, I started working uh, in late August uh, in Stable Corp. So mostly because I knew um, the founders, Kasim Frank and, and some of his uh, partners and colleagues from uh, Deloitte Canada. And so we kept the friendship going and at some point they presented me the project and I thought it was a, a very interesting project and, and a moment in my career that I wanted to do some entrepreneurial um, efforts uh, instead of just keeping the corporate uh, path, which was what I've been doing forever. Fantastic. I remember meeting with you and, and Kesem and the team back in Toronto uh, midway through last year, and it's very it was very cool to watch you guys go from kind of an idea at your offices there in Toronto all the way through to fruition to the day that we listed it and, and put it live on the Bitbo Exchange and watched our customers trade it. So it's a very cool process to be involved in, and congratulations on where you've gotten to so far. No, thank you. Meaning likewise, if it wasn't for partners like Bitfo, we wouldn't be there. And, and I think from a, let's say, corporate spirit perspective or company spirit perspective, we actually, you know, put a lot of our um, uh, efforts and, and body and mind into the end of last year to get this live. So I think that's a bit of every entrepreneurial company, the fact that you just want to make it uh, work regardless of the challenges you have ahead. So so I agree with you, getting it live uh, early this year was challenging and exciting at the same time. Yeah. Like any new project. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we take a, a quick step back? Um, I'm not sure what level our viewers are at in terms of their knowledge of stable coins. Um, so maybe you can take a, a brief moment, just kind of at a high level, explain what they are, how they work, what their benefit might be. Sure. No, that's uh, meaning one of the questions I get the most. And I, I love to go through because we always add some additional flavor to try to make the answer uh, easy to understand and, 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 and easy to replicate. So stable coins um, are a new, not so new, but a, a, a fairly new asset class. So a new um, instrument or, or, or a digital tool that you have to transfer value or store uh, value, right? And, and the idea behind stable coins are, are, are fairly simple. If you boil it down, uh, we already have uh, Bitcoin running through the first blockchain implementation for now almost 10 years and actually more than 10 years. And people have been seeing how that technology has some groundbreaking features, right? So the understanding was why not leverage from some of the native features of a, of a blockchain network but still keeping some of the properties we see in, in you know, national currencies and, and fiat currencies that have kind of a stable value. Um, all, it all depends. And currently, we're, we're living a very volatile moment regarding foreign exchange. But nonetheless, the idea is how do you merge the, the, the positive features of the blockchain with things that people already know and, and understand related to currencies or, or national currencies, right? So I think that's the, the idea behind um, a stable coin. Um, and, and also then there are complementary ideas that came into the, I think, the, the, the project or the ecosystem, which is the understanding that there's a gap between fiat currency either sitting on a bank or a credit union or in your wallet versus um, having a Bitcoin, Ether or whatever other uh, crypto asset. So there's, so, so there's a small gap 
be between them because there's everyone should know here with our best efforts, including Bitfos, to make this a fast and a seamless process. There's still of, um, a lot of le legacy process with banks and etc. that makes this this process not the, the easiest one. So having a stable coin kind of bridge that gap, right? So you would still be able to have um, um, assets or value stored in a currency like representation and go back and forth to other crypto assets that might be more volatile or have an investment profile uh, linked to it. So so I think that's the, the key idea behind um, the stable coins. What do you see people most using them for? Now that QCAD's live, what do you think the largest use of QCAD is? Yep, that's also a, a great question. So so I think it, it's interesting to go back to where the concept of a stable coin came, as I briefly mentioned. So if you look at banks now, they are already digital in some way. You use your phone, your computer, whatever, and you use your bank. But nonetheless, there's still some things that are not very easy to handle, right? So payments, they might take three to five days to get processed. They only get processed during commercial hours. Sometimes the fees are not uh, very friendly. Um, so, so those things put people sometimes away from banks or not using all the features they could use if it was a simpler process. So I think a lot of the users of stable coins are basically doing things that they would also be able to do with banks, but they are doing easier and, and cheaper using stable coins. So basically, an example from StableCorp, we have vendors uh, abroad that we hired from, um, you know, from uh, Asia and from uh, Latin America. And, and, and for both, we were able to do instantaneous payments using stable coins and specifically QCAD uh, during a weekend or overnight because, because of the time zone. Sometimes we're discussing a project at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And if we were to use our bank, which is, again, a great partner, but we would still have to wait for the next day, create a payment template, process the template, wait some other days to get cleared. So sometimes you're doing small engagements and having this sort of small fast payments with your vendors, partners, or even employees is something that create a, a, a interesting use case, right? Um, I, I could go on forever, but I think the other two use cases that I would like to also bring, one is foreign exchange. So as more and more stable coins are getting um, created and, and, and getting adopted uh, across the globe, especially Europe and United States, Latin America is also an emerging market from a stablecoin perspective as well, uh, people are able to trade between coins much faster and cheaply than they would do if they went to a traditional foreign exchange um, a company or even their banks. So people that, for instance, now we're living a very volatile moment. So it would be much easier for you to go from Canadian dollar to US dollar and vice versa using stable coins than potentially using your bank. Um, even because the bank's infrastructure got hit a bit about all the, the intensity of the movement that happened with this crisis. Uh, so, so I guess foreign exchange um, and, and payments are the two key use cases that we're seeing right now. But just to give you one, and again, it, it, it comes more and more examples to my mind, but just to give you a, another practical example, uh, JP Morgan, and this is a public information, uh, they created their own stablecoin. So it's a private uh, stable coin that they use to do settlement between the various units of the bank across the globe. So they're not a retail facing solution. It's an internal uh, corporate settlement solution. So basically, instead of wire transferring between their own banks and bank accounts and codes, they created a layer on the blockchain and it's a private blockchain and they settle their own uh, internal accounts using a stable coin. So again, we can go on and on, but I think it's always related mostly with payment settlement and, and transactions that you can do faster and cheaper.